here we are folks I'm gonna make another video I'm going to make this one of my Thompson Center Hawk and Hunter in a 45 caliber yes 45 caliber that's how old this gun is my father when I was 16 bought me this in a kit and when I mean a kit I mean this thing was really a kit the octagon barrel had all kinds of machining marks in it on each one of the flats and my dad showed me how to file out all those machine marks my dad like me was a tool and die maker by trade and he showed like I said he showed me how to file out all those machining marks on the octagon barrel the wood was really rough it had a lot of mill marks in it on the stock uh, the brass oh my goodness the brass all of that needed filed all the casting marks out of it a lot of it was a lot of work put into this it's not like some of the kits now where you know all you do is just pretty much put it together or just put a clear finish on the wood this was really a kit it was in the white meaning that uh, the barrel was not blued nothing was blued on it I had to blue the barrel I uh, got a sanding block and sanded the entire stock got all the mill marks out of it the brass like I said it's cast brass I had to get all the casting marks out of it started with a file and worked my way down to scotch brite and steel wool I mean to tell you this was really a kit let's see if I can't get a little closer here and show you a little bit it's been re-blued a couple times I think maybe two or three times I re-blued this but uh, I haven't shot it in a number of years I did try to go out last year and shoot it but uh, I ran out of black powder and I had a black powder substitute and uh, I guess it got a little bad so I tried some triple seven loose I did not have too much success with that it seemed like it was really hard to ignite like I said it it's not bad you know uh, that front sight is made of solid brass like I said I'm a tool and die maker by trade and I actually made that brass front sight myself I patterned it after uh, a sight that I saw on another Thompson Center gun probably one of the Hawking guns just took some measurements and you know just made it out of brass but like I said this was this was a real kit and there if you look close enough says caliber 45 now they probably make these Hawking rifles Thompson Center yet but uh, I'm telling you they don't make them under 45 caliber anymore let me see if I can turn this thing around here there we go get it to stay up like I said all the brass had horrible horrible machine marks in it and I had to file everything out and even the stock had some pretty rough mill marks in it but mostly it was just the sanding block and sandpaper I mean I'm pretty proud of this gun you know I put a lot of time into it and you know when I did it and then I re the barrel I know at least twice like I said I made that front sight that solid brass and the dowel rod I had to make a new one of those over which that's no big deal piece of 3 8 inch oak dowel rod you go buy that you know at Lowe's or whatever no big deal but uh, yeah I'm, I'm pretty proud of that uh, the only thing I did extra was you can see these screws here are brass they were blued at one time I just went and found some brass screws and put them in I just thought it might 
you know, just something different, a nice touch maybe. Now that's not the original site. Uh, it's a Thompson Center site, but it I forget what other kind of gun it came off of. If you look real close there, there's one of the original holes where my original site went. I uh, had a gunsmith drill and tap it and put that site on a little bit better than what was on, which I forget actually. But uh, yeah, like I said, I'm pretty proud of this gun. I think this coming summer, I'm going to try and uh, do a little shooting with this. See if I can get this thing to sit straight. There we go. I'm going to do a little shooting with this and maybe try to do a little muzzleloader hunting, you know, this year here. But, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty proud of this gun. I go over the brass every now and then and, you know, keep it polished and cleaned up. And, uh, you know, I mean, they say, you know, you don't want the brass polished and shiny. And, you know, the, the real guns, they didn't have a blued barrel. They had what they call a brown barrel. It was a, somehow they browned it. But, you know, I, I just like the bluing and, uh... Like I said, you really can't tell the bluing. It, it's worn off a little bit, but to get bluing to look really nice and polished, it's all in the preparation of the metal. Like I said, I filed the, all the machine marks out, and I went over with uh, sandpaper, wet-dry sandpaper down to 400, and then I went over it with Scotch-Brite, and then I went over it with uh, 4 aught steel wool, that made it really like a polished finish and then when you put the bluing on it looks really exquisite uh, the bluing was so dark it actually was almost black but yeah like I said I'm gonna try to do a little muzzleloader hunting with it this year if I can get the darn thing to shoot for me when I was using black powder I never had a problem but black powder is a little hard to come by maybe that's one thing I gotta try to look for but you know it is what it is I got some of that other it's called clean shot uh, it's a black powder substitute I don't believe they make it anymore that's why I got the triple seven but yeah like I said my dad bought this for me at, in a kit when I was 16 and uh, definitely put a lot of time into this uh, building it I just thought I'd show it and say here it is so all right here we go uh, I'll talk to you guys later and remember, hunt safe and good shooting.